Hey everyone, this is Steve Chase and I'm from Sequentia Solutions. Today's video, we're gonna look at how to create a sales report for commissions. Okay, so the first thing that uh, you're probably frustrated with is when you go to reports in QuickBooks Online, there isn't a report about commissions and salespeople, unfortunately. So I'm gonna share with you kind of the way that I like to do it. And that is going to be to use the sales by class uh, report. Okay, so there's first, the first thing you have to do is you have to set up your classes. And so that's probably why my report's not showing up here, sales by class yet, because I haven't set it up. And select the gear, select all list, and then we can begin by setting up our classes. And um, classes, class, classes, not here. I realized my mistake. I have to go into account and settings and turn on classes. So that's going to be underneath advanced. And here we go. We want to track classes. Turn that on. Now you do have to have QuickBooks Online Plus or higher uh, to turn that feature on. Current version of QuickBooks Online Plus is seventy dollars a month. Okay, ouch! That's it's worth it if you if you're using QuickBooks to its fullest and you're you have a productive and profitable business. Really rough when you're just starting a business out. I get that. Okay, so now that we have classes available, we're going to make each sales rep who's getting commission be the be the uh, the salespeople, so I'm gonna click and just create new uh, classes here for so we're gonna have Alex Johnson, Bob Dylan, Liner, right? I don't know if I spelled her name right. That's all right. Okay. These are all awesome all star sales force here. Okay. The next thing we, we have is we're going to uh, set up some invoices or sales receipts and link these to the sales classes. So when we click on the plus sign, we click an invoice. And let's pick a customer. Let's select description. And then over to the right, you're going to see a class. So this is where we're going to want to select the, the, the sales staff there. Hit save. And I'm gonna create a bunch more so we have an idea of seeing this here. I'm going to receive a $3,000 payment on that check there. Okay, and if you're ever receiving money at the same time, you can do a sales receipt. So let's do a $10,000 sales receipt check for consulting. And we'll put, um, Bob Dylan down for the sales trainer there. Okay, save here. Okay. So at this point of time, I think we have enough sales transactions. If we were to just go to the straight up profit and loss report, it's going to show uh, these these sales here that we have. Uh, I should date it for today. 
There we go. Okay, so May 31, 2019, 13,000 consulting. Now we haven't received all of that. So switching over to the cash basis will show the difference of what's actually been received. We actually have received uh, 13,000. Our accrual is 19,000, okay. How do we show who's making which sales? So there's gonna be a report for that. We're gonna go to reports. And now that we have classes turned on, you'll see the profit and loss uh, by class. And you would make sure that you use the correct dates through this period here. Again, cash, I would run these as cash because that way you know how much came in for those. You'll start to see non-specified would be transactions that have been in the past or present that you have that don't have any um, trainers or classes associated with that particular environment there. So if we realize Doug Arlington should have had should have had a class associated with it, then we can go back in time later and bring that in right there. All right. <clears throat> okay. So the other report I want to share with you is under sales and customers, and it is sales by class summary. That's a good one there. All right. And that's going to give you, again, accrual versus cash. Make, make sure you're doing commissions. You want to only work with cash basis accounting because that's, that's, what you know what's happened there okay so that's a summary and you can choose to run the dates of the summary in a variety of different things like for example this year you'll see where we're at here this year okay yeah the other one is if you like the details we're going to go back to reports we're going to scroll down we're going to look for the under sales and customers uh, there's going to be an option for sales by class detail right here. So I like that one. All right, that one is really helpful to do. And then um, there's a variety of things. So if you're running sales weekly, you can do this week right here, to this week to date. Cash is what you're going to want to say. And we'll show you what's going on this week. You might also go in and do this month to date as well uh, to get that um, on, on the settings there, okay? Once you have the right setup and you're, you've got the right date frame there, you can go over to Customize and you can modify the the rows and columns change columns okay I like to add the uh, AR paid okay that's helpful that's helpful um, to see the balance that's still unpaid right here and, and what's paid here now on a um, sales receipt Sales receipts are already paid off, so there won't be a marker there on that. Um, the other I column I like to do is I like to see the payment method. So if we go ahead and customize and go into payment method, that will be really helpful to see check, credit card, and so forth like that. It so might be that you need to track who pays with a check because um, that's that's going to be a big difference for a credit card. If $10,000 check coming in for, under Bob Dylan is going to get that straight. But if, if uh, the customer decided to pay with credit card, then we need to assess uh, some credit card fees and think of how that could influence your, uh, your commissions report. Do you take the fees out first before you pay them on these commissions here? Okay, so then once you have your report set for the dynamic range that oh, every time you open up this report, it will be this month to, 
this month to date, if you do 12 times or this week to date, um, you then want to save, save it. So I would just call it sales by class this month to date. If I wanted to share it with the owner of the company, I would say all here so everybody in the organization can see it or you can decide on that. And you could also build out new specific report viewers that you could have access to the report as well. So um, let's assume we want to save everybody who's on the accounts and admin. So we'll save it like that. Um, I'm the only one signing this account, so that's why it gave me that warning there. But if you have more, two or more users signed in, you would do that. I also would come in here and uh, emphasize it, cash basis. Go save customization on top of that. Okay. All right. When you're done, uh, with the report where it's going to show up is now it's going to show up under reports custom reports um, Hold on a second Did I just lose all that work here sales by cash? Um Okay, okay. This month to date, cash. Oh, that's it's like there's more. Um, I did, I did lose that. So I'm gonna bring in real quick here the payment method, accounts receivable, paid. Um, you could bring in class if you wanted to, but it's already grouped by class. If you wanted to unhide any of these, you could do that as well. Let's save it again, but this time I'll, I'll leave it at none. So it should work here. Monthly mission report, cash basis, save. Now, okay, customer, it did save, good. The reports, custom report, that's what I wanted you guys to see right there. In the custom reports, you're going to have the name of the report, who created it, and then um, the date range. So if you decide, that you want to run it, you just click on it. You could come in here and modify the dates for sure and run it through it, but a typical um, process would be that's the first step, gather your data. Then the second step um, is going to be to send it to Microsoft Excel. Um, and then once you get it in Microsoft Excel, then you could create a formula that could calculate the actual percentage of these amounts here. And if you needed to also create another formula to subtract the credit card fees also in Excel, you would do that in Excel. So it does take an extra effort of using another tool. I use Excel, but you could use Google Sheets as well to do that. But this will be your basis where you're going to as a PDF to hard code it. Um, that would be another opportunity as well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We learned about how to use the sales by class detail report or the sales by class summary report. Real quick, the summary report is, is going to be down below. Sales by class summary. It's just gonna show you um, where we're at and make sure that you have the right dates set up as, as you see there, okay? The cool thing about this report here if you did all dates you could group it by months and everything was in may anyway but you'd see a really cool breakdown of that or years or quarters and, and so forth like that so pretty cool pretty cool stuff there okay um i'd like to invite you to my website sequentiasolutions.com here you'll see um, a variety of different services that our firm offers um, you can check out our blog and there will be lots more uh, QBO videos. I also have a brand new QBO course that's almost four hours in length. And if you are interested in purchasing that, just go ahead and look at the shopping cart page here. This will be in detail, kind of what you're gonna get. You'll have access to these videos that I've created. And this, this is really for anybody who's brand new at QuickBooks Online. 
who's trying to set up QBO on their own and needs a little assistance, these videos, I hope, will help you get you the answers that you're looking for. Okay. See the different price points here of that setting there. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, again, this is Steve Chase. Hope to catch you next time on the, my next video.